presented. Okay. I just wanted to let everybody know that uh, even though some of the companies that have been coming to present about their work have might not be in the room for the student presentations, I'm definitely in contact with them and have told them, you know, watch watch the student presentations online. So when we record these and set them up online, we'll make sure that the, the companies have a chance to see them. And because they're there permanently, they'll be they'll have the chance to see them when they're doing their hiring. So this will be a nice advantageous position. So don't worry about who's in the room right now. I'm making sure people see these. Okay, thank you. Just hold the mic closer to your mouth so that the recording picks up the audio well, um, so that when we share it, you know, your presentation is audible. Okay. Sorry, uh, it's not working. Control. Uh. Hi everyone, I am Zahar Khansat and I'm a PhD candidate at York University. My supervisors are Professor Heffernan and Professor Myles. My skills are mathematical modeling of diseases by using partial differential equations, PDEs. And I have a strong background in epidemiology and disease transmission dynamics. I can use drug therapy in disease models and also programming skills for numerical simulation and sensitivity analysis. And also I can collaborate with in the uh, interdisciplinary teams. So my relevant work and research experiences, uh, well, I have been a mathematics teacher since uh, 2013. And also I was a member at the Shaif Cancer Club at Shaif University of Technology in Iran. And I am a member of modeling uh, infection and immunity uh, lab at York University. And also currently I'm working on two projects. One of them is the phase structured and age structure model of malaria infection in human bodies and also social distancing dynamics of uh, COVID. So my professional direction is to bridge the gap between the mathematical modeling and practical application in public health to work at the intersection of academia and public policy, contributing to evidence-based decision-making for disease control and preventions. And also I want to expand my skills. I want to model uh, new infectious diseases. And also I want to explore new methods and technology uh, to enhance the accuracy and also the applicability of disease models. And finally, to make a meaningful impact on global health. And thank you. Uh, oh, uh, so hi, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for uh, coming to the event and thank you for um, uh, MFPH to holding such a brilliant event for all of us. Uh, my name is Sichuan Zhao, you can just call me Richard, I use that name for publication as well. Uh, I'm a PhD candidate uh, fourth year at Queen's University. I'm from Department of Mathematics and Statistics and my supervisor is Professor Felicia McTempe and also working a PhD student intern at KFLA uh, Public Health Department uh, in the Knowledge Management team and here's my uh, email and uh, my LinkedIn account you can try to contact with me uh, we are looking for some collaboration I'll show that later uh, sorry yeah, so I'll start with my applied math journey or my motivation and my educational experience at the same time. So I started to go into mathematical modeling in my high school. I'm good at math from Marlboro Young, as most of the Chinese students, you know. And uh, I kind of like attend a mathematical modeling competition for all the high school, school, high school students in Beijing. And I won the first prize in that. 
I'm working on a mathematical modeling for optimized like the ticket machine in the uh, subway station in Beijing. And uh, at that stage, I kind of like like or like began to how to say being really interested into solving challenging real world mathematical problems uh, using mathematical models and mathematical tools. So to achieve my goal, I keep working uh, like attending the uh, Fudan University at Shanghai uh, in China uh, in like uh, BSc of uh, math and applied math program. And I'm there we got a good chance to not just taking courses from like pure math applied math. I'm also taking a lot of like applicational course to trying to figure out which kind of like fields we can use math or mathematical modeling on. And that's including uh, like history, social science, actual science. And I'm also working as like the uh, student president of the student union of my uh, college here. Uh, like during my study at Fudan, uh, a kind of like common situation I learned as a mathematical student to when communicate with like students with other backgrounds, it's like it's gonna hard to communicate and applying those mathematical models, especially they are not learning your mathematical skills. So with that questions, I keep pursuing my study uh, into here at Canada. I go to Brock University first for my Master of Science. I'm doing PDEs and mathematical physics in there and learning some mathematical programming, probability and statistical learning there. And with that question, my master's supervisor actually gave me a uh, very good answer for that. He insists that my our, our mathematical research and modeling uh, should be more presented systematically and consistency, right? So everybody, even though they are not that skilled as you in mathematics, can follow your idea, can get what you're thinking, and so they can follow your method and apply them to their own fields. Then I go to my current position at Queen's University as the PhD candidate now, and I'm working on uh, biology, mathematics, and epidemiology models uh, using mathematical tools. Uh, I'll talk about my uh, research specialty later. But my current supervisor, Felicia McTempe, also provides a very good answer for my questions. He, she insists like the mathematical models should be transparent and careful about these assumptions. Right, so then the user and the audience and the public can get a clear idea what's going to be the limitation and the applicational case for the model and how to modify them with their own user scenario. Okay, so that's my journey and what I'm currently down is uh, network models for transmission of infectious disease here. So it's using random network techniques to considering social structure and biology in, uh, like uh, heterogeneity into our traditional compartmental model buildings. And uh, we're using a massive so-called uh, bound percolation process. I'm showing a, a poster outside the classroom here. If you're interested in that field, I can give you a short presentation. And we are also working on how to interact these models with the partial immunity and social control strategies for public health as well. And my accomplishment for now, we have a published paper related to these topics it's called Reinfection Threshold, uh, published on mathematical bioscience now. And I have a scientific uh, talk at CMS Summer this summer at uh, uh, Ottawa. And we're now just published uh, our package now for network model and population methods. Uh, it's called uh, our epi-NACO PERCO, so epidemic network percolation. Uh, we're looking for collaborating now because I'm purely math background. Uh, we're looking for collaboration with data scientists to optimize our data structure, calculation efficiency, and like optimize the package for parallel computing for the future. And for the applicational side, I also have a collaborate uh, project with the KFLA Public Health Department now. It's a CHR funded project. We're uh, targeting on kind of like control syphilis transformation, trans, uh, sorry, syphilis uh, transmission uh, in the homeless underserved communities now. And my role there is using that to control syphilis transmission. Uh, Creating now, oh sorry, creating network models uh, to analysis data and justify impact and testing treatment strategies. And I'm also keep developing, optimizing, and testing the R package with the real data. And last uh, quick takeover uh, highlights 
or like bullet points here. That's my skill, learn from my experience, and that's my career goal. I'll go through some of them. So I have a strong quantitative background. I have a PhD, my MNC, BSc, both in applied math. And I also have experience with public health management here and also uh, mathematical programming. I'm developing packages both for R and Maple and familiar with SAS and MATLAB. And I also have an internship with uh, like international insurance company. So I have some experience with uh, financial risk management. And as a student council president, I have some leadership uh, experience and also have multiple projects in international teams with high diversity in background, both in professional background and language background. Right. And then for communication, I have a lot of teaching experience as TAs and like co lectures uh, here at Queens. Uh, my career goal is first definitely kind of like uh, develop like creative tools uh, and models to solve challenging problems, either using my specialty in public health or like all other possible fields like financial or any like AI, data science fields. And another target, which answered my original question, is I want to optimize the math such my results and models in a systematic and transparent perspective to make it easier to understand and communicate with other professional background people, and easier to apply with confidence and efficiency, and easier to adjust and extend to fit more specific compliance cases. That's all. Thank you for the listening. Hi everybody, my name is Yaroslav. I'm really happy to meet you all at this conference. Um, I'm a research assistant at the Mathematics, Analytics, and Data Science Lab here at the Fields Institute. I'm also a research assistant at the University of Toronto and a graduate teaching assistant at graduate and undergraduate courses here at UFT as well. I do research in applied machine learning and in my current research, I characterize multivariate, multi-class time series. I do clustering, classification, and probabilistic modeling of their underlying dynamics. I also investigate how the time series evolve over a number of observations. In my current research, there is a number of challenges that we face, and the most important of those is approximation of continuous signals which exhibit a nonlinear, non-stationary structure. Also, we generalize over a vast variety of rare, um, of rare sequences, and we also do end-to-end -end development of the product, which doctors can actually use in their uh, clinical setup. I have completed a number of graduate courses, which helped me a lot in this research. Uh, one of the most important is neural networks and deep learning, um, which is a, the very essential course for, for the research. Uh, the systems, uh, the course in systems, uh, visual and mobile computing is also important because it is a course at the edge of software and hardware programming. And of course, the information visual visualization, because Whenever research uh, we do, we have to present it to our customer and we have to know how to do it effectively. I also TA the natural language processing course um, and have an extensive experience in uh, Python programming languages and PyTorch uh, framework. The uh, programming languages apart from um, Python are JavaScript and C Sharp, um, they're kind of helpful when it comes to scaffolding of databases. And of course, the DevOps uh, tools. The future work I would love to embrace is the generation of single molecule cells. I, um, I believe that while AlphaFold is a great um, achievement in, well, in uh, protein generating challenge, we have, to, um, we have to actually start exploring and not exploiting the existing knowledge. It's very interesting how large language models could help us achieve these goals. 
of course, we have to finally stop guessing uh, whether this particular patient is going to benefit from this or another drug. Uh, we have to make medicine personalized. Um, thank you very much for your attention, and I'm really happy to meet you all here. Hi, my name is Rada Rusu, and I'm a Master of Science in Epidemiology candidate at McGill University within the Department of Epidemiology, Biostatistics, and Occupational Health. So just a little bit about me. I'm a pretty curious, passionate, hardworking individual. I'm very much driven by work that's impactful at a large scale. So for me, it's really important that um, the work that I do um, not only embedders our world, but is also very much data driven and evidence based driven. So for me, that's the angle that I would like to take in my future and, and what I am trying to continuously um, explore within my career path and my experiences. Um, I have four years of research experience with much of that being within industry. Uh, in terms of my areas of expertise, I sort of bucket them up into uh, into three buckets. Uh, one being um, that I have some quite diverse experience um, in terms of research. So I have both academia and clinical research experience with different kinds of studies under my belt. I've worked with surveillance uh, data sets, uh, um, other kinds of observational data sets. I've worked in, with predictive modeling, systematic reviews, um, kind of a variety of things. I also have worked with multiple disease areas, uh, primarily in infectious diseases. So as of now, I'm focusing on dengue antimicrobial resistance, but I've worked in COVID and HIV, TB, um, doing that kind of right now as well. And also within the autoimmune disease uh, area, specifically within maternal fetal medicine um, with HDFN, myasthenia gravis, and then not a disease area, but I've worked in maternal health in various contexts. And then I've also worked with a variety of different data, uh, uh, data types. So I've worked with registry data, claims data, uh, health records, as well as various observation, uh, operational metrics. And uh, through all these experiences as well, and through the areas uh, that I've worked in, I've gained a lot of different kinds of skills. I won't go through all of them, but a lot of this has gone through, you know, I've, I've done a lot of data analytics, uh, modeling, uh, machine learning. I primarily use R. I've done a lot of scientific research and writing. I've done a lot of evidence uh, generation, dissemination, strategic planning. So a lot of strategy development plans um, and clinical operations and regulatory affairs. And I definitely hold uh, leadership teamwork skills project management skills, communication and public speaking skills. Hopefully you see that now. <laughs> and then just in terms of my career um, and my t educational timeline, I got a bachelor's uh, in animal biology from the University of Guelph. I was wanting to be a veterinarian as a lot of people were in my bachelor's. A lot of my experiences were working at veterinary clinics. Uh, so I have a, in a way some kind of clinical experience as a vet assistant. Uh, I also worked with in zoos and in wildlife sanctuaries. Um, and then I became really interested in research. So I, I got a, a summer research associate role at the Toronto Zoo within the Reproductive Health uh, Sciences Unit. And that really sparked my interest in research. I did an undergraduate research project in animal welfare and behavior, which led me to then really wanting to explore other paths um, in clinical research. And so um, as I was waiting to hear back from vet school, I uh, got a position at Johnson & Johnson as a clinical operations intern. And that was an interesting role because it was an operational team at an enterprise level. So we were supporting the uh, sector's operational groups. And our job was really to harmonize systems and SOPs that we had, but also design new, SO, uh, new uh, method, uh, systems. So I actually led a cross-functional global project where we deployed a new operational system. Um, so in a way, I also got some technology solutions design experience. Um, and I have also experience with different kinds of products, drugs, medical devices, combination products, a little bit consumer products as well. Uh, I ended up staying at Johnson & Johnson. I became an, op uh, an operations associate and uh, there I was really able to explore um, epidemiology and public health as I did some stretch assignments within the company. Uh, I worked, uh, just some highlights, I worked with the women's health team where we uh, studied uh, COVID-19 
and pregnancy outcomes. Um, so with individuals who were infected with COVID, we looked at pregnancy outcomes through a registry and we published that work um, with looking at social determinants of health and uh, their, their impacts on uh, those outcomes. And another highlight was working on the maternal morbidity and mortality crisis within the US using some claims data um, and that's also out there. Uh, now I'm uh, doing my master's because I really want to cement my scientific rigor and methods um, technical skills. And so I'm doing a, an epi degree, as I mentioned, um, with Dr. David Buckridge at McGill and I'm co-supervised by Dr. John Brownstein, who's at Harvard. And my thesis topic is looking to build multi-level machine learning models to predict antibiotic susceptibility of UTI causing pathogens um, and really hoping to enhance the empiric treatment process and hopefully uh, slowing down the spread of antimicrobial resistance. And this is where my animal biology background comes in as well. Uh, and I've also been awarded the CIHR CGSM uh, grant for this thesis. Concurrently, I'm working as a research associate uh, in, with, in, within medical affairs at, uh, in our global public health team. And I focus within the infectious diseases space, primarily on dengue. As I said, I also work with HIV and TB. And I do a lot of evidence generation, dissemination planning, uh, systematic reviews. We do a lot of burden of disease studies, market access studies, um, and um, ad boards, symposias, things like that. And so in terms of future looking, I'm looking for my new challenge uh, where I can have this intersectionality between animal health, human health, environmental health, um, in various different kinds of roles. As an epidemiologist, maybe within medical affairs, I, I'm enjoying my role currently um, within R&D and more clinical research um, side of things, or even as a public health specialist program officer. And I'm really open to working in the various sectors, um, government, NGOs, funders, startups. I'm also happy to stay in industry. It really depends on the role, um, but I'm definitely happy to uh, chat. And, and I really thank you all for the opportunity to come up here feel free to contact me through my uh, email or you feel free to follow, follow or uh, connect with me on LinkedIn. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Kuganya Nirmala Raja, and I am a PhD student at the University of Toronto in the Department of Laboratory Medicine and Pathobiology, which is under the Faculty of Medicine. So just a little bit about my academic background. I started at McMaster University, uh, where I received my Honours Bachelor of Health Science degree, and this was in a specialization in biology and pharmacology. This program had also allowed us to do co-op placement, which is where I ended up working in an academic lab that focuses on um, microbiome uh, research. So a lot of my work there was based on investigating the um, upper respiratory tract microbiota. And now I'm currently doing my um, grad studies at the University of Toronto. Um, so I started off in the master's program um, in 2020, and I then later reclassified into the PhD program. So that's where I'm at, at right now. So some of the uh, projects I'm currently working on, um, as you can see, there's a couple of different things I'm doing. So the first one is to investigate kind of SARS-CoV-2, um, both at the virus level and at the host in terms of patients. So one of the projects that I've, um, that's just recently been published is to investigate intra-host viral diversity um, within SARS-CoV-2 in patients that were treated with antivirals such as remdesivir. And um, another focus of my work uh, on SARS-CoV-2 is to actually um, investigate associations between the genome of, of, the, of the virus as well as um, different clinical patient uh, data. So this can be in the form of symptoms or um, comorbidities that patients might have. And we're doing this to investigate different outcomes such as hospitalization, disease severity, length of stay um, as well in, in hospital, um, as well as trying to predict ICU admission. Uh, so when moving on to the other project that I'm also working on, that's a little bit more of my focus now that I've uh, transferred into the PhD program, and that is to identify some of the most um, prominent strains and genotypes of RSV. So RSV um, has actually been quite understudied when it comes to um, 
the different genotypes and strains that are currently circulating in Canada, it's quite understudied. We don't have that many genomes that have been publicly available in our um, databases. So that's something that we want to do just to get a general understanding of what's out there. But then we also want to perform some phylogenetic and phylogenetic analysis um, to, to estimate some evolutionary parameters. And then lastly, um, we are working on kind of generating um, a workflow that can allow laboratory staff and clinical staff to um, instantly get a report on genomic data. So this will involve taking us from whole genome sequencing pipelines, then performing bioinformatics, um, and then finally resulting in a report that can be easily interpreted by uh, laboratory staff and healthcare professionals. So here are just some of my relevant skills. Um, so when it comes to some of the more data uh, analysis and programming, I have some skills in R as well as Python, um, and also machine learning. And then going back to bioinformatic analysis, so there's um, some experience there with um, performing variant analysis as well as um, genome assembly. I have some, so my, my background is um, a bench scientist. I come from wet lab experience. So I do have all the um, typical uh, molecular skill sets when it comes to things such as uh, whole genome sequencing, as well as um, I'm trained in a level two, uh, bi bi biosafety level two lab as well. And then some of my um, industry and professional skills, I did briefly work in industry um, prior to entering graduate studies. So from there, I have developed some leadership collaboration as well as some of the uh, good laboratory practices and manufacturing practices as well. So this is just an overview of some of my uh, achievements um, throughout uh, my time in grad school. I've been involved in a couple of different COVID-19 studies um, as well as um, being uh, funded by uh, U of T's Emerging um, uh, Pandemic Infectious Consortium, as well as the Institute of Pandemics. Um, and then when it comes to some of my uh, involvement in the community, I do, I am passionate about career development. So I've taken on roles that can bridge the ac academia to industry connection, especially among trainees at U of T, um, as well as some of the other uh, experiences I've had within student unions. Um, and then also going back to my alma mater as a panelist there as well. So this is just an overview of my uh, work experiences. So starting off at McMaster University, where I was both a thesis student as well as a um, research assistant. And then uh, my time in industry, where I worked um, more so on the quality control lab at Thermo Fisher and Johnson & Johnson. And then I started as a research assistant at Sunnybrook at the height of the pandemic. Um, and I also transitioned into my graduate studies um, from then on. And then at Public Health Ontario, um, my co-supervisor, who is from Public Health Ontario, I'm now focusing on um, kind of the work that's been discussed previously on RSV and COVID-19. And in terms of my areas of interest, I'm really interested in kind of focusing on bioinformatic development, focusing on whole genome sequencing workflow. So I'd love to um, work on developing such tools, whether it be for diagnostics or therapeutics, um, either in the um, in the industry at the industry level or in, um, in, in government or public health. So yeah, thank you so much for listening. So good, good morning everyone. My name is like Evangeline and you can call me Eva. I'll give you a brief introduction about myself. Uh, so like I'm a first year PhD student in McGill University and supervised by Dr. David Buckridge. And I haven't exactly decided my thesis topic be, but it will be potentially on like um, implementing like digital surveillance tools using machine learning and I have not always started in public health. I was like a neuroscience major with a computer science minor at Wellesley College in the US. And my interest in epidemiology and like, and data science was sparked when I was reading about this like novel tool called Google Flu Trends, and which uses like, which can predict flu outbreaks using by tracking users keywords such as like Tylenol. And this led me to pursue my master's science degree at Yale University, where I learned about epidemiology and also key data science techniques, such as like uh, deep learning and NLP. 
And now I will be talking a little bit about my data science skills uh, through some projects I did through my master's practicum. Oops. And so, so the first project I did is like using like using like deep learning to to segment like CT images to diagnose COVID. And so this picture over there is like a model output. So the image on the image on the left, the most left is the what we put in the model. And the middle image is like the ground truth what we expected. And the last image is the like model prediction. So like as the figure suggests, and also with the it has a high accuracy of 93%. I also did another project and using I in which I also used another deep learning model to classify like Alzheimer's disease by using raw speech audio. And this figure over here is showing like the uh, it's showing a plot of like the loss over time. And model loss is basically a good like approximation for how accurate the model is on in individual predictions. And convergence to zero means like the model performs well. And I also have like from this result, I have a test accuracy of 77%, which is like pretty good compared to the baseline accuracy of 71%. Uh, determined by another study previously. And now I'll be talking a little bit more about my publication history. And I have also participated into several uh, biostatistical research that either resulted in like, like a publication or a manuscript submitted to under review. So the first project I did was like on like network analysis. Uh, in which like we use like network analysis as well as like hazard modeling to quantify the uh, quantify the rate of physicians like learn new clinical practice during a clinical trial and this like this project has resulted in a manuscript that was like uh, recently recently submitted to like the journal JAMA network open and it's currently on review and um, I also have like I also participated in another project which was published like recently and it talks about like we employs NLP techniques to get to uh, to understand the patterns of like caretaker care, care communication in the emergency department for like people with dementia. So if, uh, I will close my presentation with like some of the areas of interest and my career future career aspirations. So here are the several areas of interest I'm interested in. And my ideal career would definitely involve intersection of public health and data science. I will also be open to working to like health data science roles such as like uh, machine learning as well. And so here, that's the end of my presentation. And please feel free to like approach me later on or email me if you have any questions. Thank you. So if everyone can hear me okay. I'm Rhiannon Loster and I'm a second year Master of Mathematics student at the University of Guelph. A uh, general overview, my areas of expertise are mathematical modeling and epidemiology. And my thesis is looking at modeling behavior and compliance policies during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, I'm very passionate about learning new things and I hope to work in industry and continue working with modeling spread and dynamics of diseases. So just a bit of my background, um, I finished my bachelor's majoring in biomedical sciences and minoring in mathematics at the University of Guelph as well. And during this time, I realized that mathematical modeling was what I loved and I went straight into a master's of mathematics with a collaborative specialization in One Health. Um, and last year I was an NSERC recipient and this year I was an OGS recipient for my thesis work. Um, I also take a lot of courses outside of my programs because I love to learn. And so I took the ARMS Emerging Infectious Disease Modeling Summer School this past August. And I also took the Fields Institute short course for forecasting for decision making. And I also took the One Health Modeling Emerging Infectious Diseases shared graduate courses one and two. And I also have my B2 DEL for my uh, French proficiency certificate. So my technical knowledge, um, I did a lot of epidemiology, immunology, physiology courses in my undergrad. 
And this gave me a lot of background information on the diseases that I'm modeling. Um, it really helps with the um, interpretation of the models and the results I have. And I've continued to take epidemiology as electives through my graduate studies as well. Um, I have proficiency coding in both R and Python and some experience with SAS and Julia as well. And I've used a lot of modeling techniques to date, like optimization, regression modeling, um, some machine learning, game theory, and I do a lot of deterministic epidemiological models. And I also have experience using all the Microsoft Office applications, Overleaf I use a lot, and some experience in GitHub as well. So to show some of my relevant skills, I was hoping to explain where I've used them in either my work, research, or volunteer experiences. So starting off, I mainly do my research in a lab group run by Dr. Monica Kojukaru and Dr. Edward Toms at the University of Guelph. And right now we have a couple models that we're working on to forecast the current influenza season in the US, which we are submitting to the CDC flu site competition. And we're also collaborating with the CDC um, to try and come up with new methods to make ensemble models to forecast the influenza season as well. So in this, my main jobs are not only to brainstorm new ideas and do the actual coding, but I also took it upon myself to create an overleaf that has all the explanations of all the methods we've done and all the results so that the entire team can use that um, and to present it when we have meetings with the CDC. Then the One Health specialization aspect of my master's really focuses on putting the One Health approach into your thesis research. This has helped a lot with my community engagement, uh, collaboration with other members within the department, as well as interdisciplinarity. And these courses also give us a lot of experience when it comes to hosting seminars and facilitating those types of discussions. So I also volunteer as a co-president of a graduate student group in my department at U of G. Um, and really we host and organize a bunch of academic and social events to increase the sense of community within the graduate school there and to um, give networking opportunities to the students. And this not only took like leadership skills, but also those problem solving, planning, organization, communication skills. Uh, lastly, I've done a lot of written projects and presentations and some papers on the way um, in just my last year, but even more so in my undergrad, some of which are on this slide. And this has not only helped my presentation skills, but also my research communication skills in not just mathematics, but a variety of fields. And so, thank you for listening to my talk. <laughs> Hello, my name is Maria Barrios. I'm a PhD student of Afrobe Informatics. Uh, at University of British Columbia. I also have a bachelor and master's degree in applied mathematics from Amilcare University in Iran. Uh, about my uh, background, uh, I should say my background is uh, related to optimization and I know a lot of methodology uh, in the optimization, such as mixed integer nonlinear programming, bi level programming, robot optimization. And I also uh, work uh, in portfolio management area, uh, finance, and machine learning, and healthcare operation as an application in operation research. Uh, if I want to mention some relevant uh, skills uh, here, uh, I have experience uh, of working with uh, Python, GAMS, and MATLAB, and uh, I know lots of uh, optimization algorithms such as decomposition-based algorithms, uh, meta-heuristic algorithms, and global optimization algorithms, and I have a knowledge about the simulation and modeling and time series analysis and uh, statistic, uh, sam statistical sampling and design, especially scenario generation methods. Here is uh, some of my publications. Uh, in my publications, I use operation research uh, uh, methods in finance and especially in risk budgeting problem. 
And uh, for my future, I'm really enthusiastic about uh, using my knowledge, my optimization knowledge in uh, healthcare problems. I mean, using bi-level programming techniques and mathematical models in healthcare problems. And here is uh, some of my ideal future job. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Yuan Yu, and I'm a currently a postdoc at uh, McGill University. And sorry about this uh, title may be too academic, but it's kind of explain my uh, career path uh, from the PhD in the staff training to a postdoc in a public health area. So uh, here is uh, two major research uh, interests that. Uh, uh, I'm looking for or uh, I'm currently doing in the Bayesian application area. So uh, the current one is uh, for the blood donor COVID-19 zero uh, productivity uh, study that utilizing the Bayesian multi-level regression model and we adding the spatial effect uh, into it. And you can see that um, the evolution from the pandemic uh, from the uh, early stage to the um, the later stage for the um, Ontario. So it's uh, just the, the current uh, project idea involving a little bit of the spatial effect. And the uh, uh, next one is uh, what I did previously about um, uh, Bayesian small area an analysis, so which is um, uh, involving uh, survey design that uh, also utilizing the spatial hierarchical modeling um, architecture. So uh, that is, uh, yeah, the first one is uh, the uh, current result we have achieved uh, for analyzing the NTN zero positivity across uh, all the regions uh, in Canada and we uh, achieved a higher accuracy in estimation for the zero positivity. And this is uh, the joint work with uh, collaboration of the uh, Canadian Blood Services and uh, also the CITF um, during the pandemic. And uh, a little bit earlier, so this is uh, kind of uh, another um, Bayesian application that uh, I probably done during my PhD and it's uh, about the survey design. So uh, it's kind of uh, giving an idea of how you can um, design the, the question when it comes with some um, like a specific question that you may not getting the true answer when you're directly asking them. So uh, we design uh, our related question. It's uh, under the topic of the random response technique. And uh, we generalize to from the single question to the multiple question. So this uh, forms up the, the, the basic idea of how the Bayesian statistic can be applied to so many areas that uh, you can have a scheme of the modeling to design um, underlying parameter and you can utilize the Bayesian um, modeling skills to um, get the estimation uh, for the underlying estimator. And uh, that's uh, another application of the Bayesian hierarchical modeling based on the design I just uh, talked about. So. Uh, it's very crucial for the uh, public health data to be released to uh, for the general general use because uh, most of the data are confidential and uh, through our design we could um, apply the sampling scheme to any confidential data and kind of masking the data from a sampling scheme and then that data can maintain the similar uh, result uh, of the proportion estimation. So um, it could be provided to the public as a, a mask form of the data for use. 
So that uh, summarized for uh, my uh, research interest. And uh, I hope to uh, talk with uh, anyone who is interested in the spatial applications in the survey design or in the general topic. So yeah, that, that's all my uh, presentation. Thank you. So we have one more presentation. Um, Joanna, if you can just unmute yourself and share your slides, please. I can try to put them up um, on the screen. So, so unfortunately, Joanna was supposed to join us in person, but she wasn't able to, so she'll be making a presentation online. Okay, perfect. Uh, just one second until we, I can display your slides. Okay, Joanna, if you can, um, yeah, you can go ahead and present. I don't know if you wanna um, open your video as well. I don't know if that's possible, but. Yes, good. it is possible. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm happy to join you. Uh, my name is Joanna Romero. I hold a PhD in mathematics. Uh, talking a little bit about my academic background, uh, I hold a bachelor degree in mathematics, a master degree in applied mathematics to biology, a PhD degree in mathematics from University of Antioquia in Colombia. And recently I finished a postgraduate certificate in big data analytics in Georgian College, uh, Canada. Um, uh, currently uh, I'm working as a postdoctoral fellow in University of Manitoba, based in University of Montreal. My supervisors are Professor Julien Arino from University of Manitoba and Bushra Nasri from University of Montreal. I'm working uh, in vector-borne disease, uh, particularly in dengue, Zika, and chikungunya. Uh, before that, I, I made a postdoctoral fellow in Colombia during two years, where I research and collaborate with interdisciplinary groups in biology, medicine, and biology and ecology. Um, regarding my experience, I can say that my experience can be divided into two branches. The first one is a teaching experience, and the second one is a, a research experience. I had almost eight years of teaching experience, uh, teaching courses like uh, calculus, linear algebra, dynamical system, biostatistics, and numerical methods. And regarding my um, research experience, I have around 30 uh, published manuscripts in topics related to antimicrobial resistance, uh, vector-borne disease, uh, and populations ecology. Uh, my areas of interest are focused on vector-borne disease, particularly in mosquito-borne disease, in fisheries, uh, mathematical modeling, statistical modeling, and data analysis. I can say my particular skills are uh, working with the modeling using ordinary differential equations, solving some optimal control analysis problems, uh, analyzing time series, particularly uh, looking for missing data in time series uh, for fisheries and data visualization analysis. Uh, I'm pro I have proficiency in software like MATLAB, R, Tableau, and Power BI for uh, data visualization. Uh, uh, talking a little bit about my grants and hours, uh, I got uh, uh, a funding for the project in mathematical modeling and optimal control in biology, health and biodiversity, where I was the principal investigator in Colombia. Um, I have the great experience to get the first place in the higher education analytical data competition in 2022. Uh, it was in Mohawk College in Ontario, Canada, and the project was evaluating algorithms for the prediction of Hamilton parking space occupancy. So thank you very much for your attention.
Thank you so much, Joanne, and for all of our student presenters. Um, one second, let me just stop the recording.